Beefcake number 15. 15. Should we keep that door open? It's nice outside. No, let's open the door. All right, do it. Should we get our assistant to open it? Hey, intern. Hey. Hey, open that door. He's not here yet. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. You could be that guy. You could. If you want to be that guy <laughs> and you're in the Memphis area. <laughs> if you're into not getting paid and hanging not, out with a couple of And you know how to shoot video and edit and record things. Yeah. We got something for you to do. And post stuff. Damn, you it's beautiful outside. You don't have to be very competent, that's for sure. Stop being yeah. a disaster. Stop being a disaster. That's the name of the blog. Stop being a disaster. All right. I got questions for you. Okay, I've got answers. Are you nutrition <laughs> Are you Von Rawls nutritionally honed in? No. No. You can't just give me one word answers. Honed in. You're honed you're using in. words on all these episodes that I don't I don't agree with. <laughs> I'm reaching far, like, man. What is I'm it? trying Tell to me. I'm trying to prove some sort of intelligence. Tell me what it means to be nutritionally honed in. I don't really know if I'm using the word correctly. I need to pull it up. Oh on no, the I think you are nutritionally honed in. Do you keep track of your macro and micros? And no, your anabolic. No, I do not. I do not track resting heart. I don't girder. Do that. Yeah, I don't do metabolism. <laughs> I do not weigh and measure my food, and I don't track micros. You don't do any of that? No. Do you count your calories? No. All right. Do nope. you know what all that stuff means? I do. I don't. Um, so. Uh, I don't think anybody cares. Don't I, go into it. I mean, people do care. People care a lot. Um, and, and if you're really serious about losing weight and you really want to not be fat, then that's the way to go. Uh, way in a measure in food, it works. As, as I sit here being fat, I say no one, really, no one, no one really cares. Don't worry about it. who cares about that. Give me, yeah. give me another. Shot. Yeah, I mean, so my take on it is, I'm a guy that ten years ago I ate McDonald's three times a day. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> did, did you really? And like, like when, no, no exaggeration. You ate McDonald's uh, three times. Uh, a day. Not every single day, but there are definitely days where I eat McDonald's for breakfast. <laughs> McDonald's for lunch, McDonald's for dinner. And you know what? Like, uh, my wife used to make fun of me all the time because I, I always had to have the super size, right? Oh, yeah. Like, whatever whatever the largest size the fast food restaurant would give me, that's what I wanted. I thought there was only one size. And it was Yeah, super. right, right. It, it was terrible. I, I was not in shape. I was not active. I didn't give a crap about food that I ate or anything. So... If you contrast that with today, where I'm a pretty active person and I pay attention to what I eat, I try not to eat, you know, bad food. I am continuously happy with my results. So I would say I'm, for the everyday guy and relative to the everyday guy, you're nutritionally honed in. Right. I think. I mean, yeah. Do you follow a specific diet? No, I try to eat real food. That's the only thing that you really concern yourself yeah, with. Yeah, I mean, I, avoiding the part of what I'm talking about in the blog is I, I say I've never seen a gluten. Like I don't know <laughs> what to, I don't know what <laughs> any of this stuff means. Uh -huh. it past, past, like I don't. When I say I don't know what it means, I, I know that what's good for you and what's not, or what's said to be. But there's yeah. just so much to it. I guess it just depends on how far into that you want to go and that's exactly right it depends on how far into it that you want to go based on what it is that you want to achieve and let right? me clarify earlier when i said no one cares i wasn't referring to no one cares about nutrition i was saying no one cares to hear you t give a lecture on nutrition on oh right podcast. right yeah with all due respect and i'm not going to do you think all that stuff is complicated all the nutritional talk yeah yeah it can be complicated because people make it complicated. I don't think it's as complicated as, as people make it out to be. I wonder if it, if I see it as being more complicated just because I'm easily confused. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not a complicated person in a sense that I complicate everything. So I can't have complicated stuff coming at me uh -huh. or else it's, it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket. So here's how I look at it. Most people that I interact with, are more like the guy that I used to be 10 years ago and are probably could probably benefit from just simply eating real food 
you know, beyond that, there is value in weighing and measuring your food and doing all that. And when, uh, I mean, my friend Alex from Barbell Shrugged, he's really good at that and he does that really well. He weighs everything he eats, doesn't eat any more than he's supposed to. If he wants to have some ice cream on the weekend or whatever, he does. And that's all well and good and he does it well. It doesn't look hard to me, but I'm not interested in doing that. Right. I just want to, I just want to eat food. Like I'm fine with just making some chili and eating that. Well, I think that <laughs> the the people that you deal with, what you're talking about, that's what this blog is about. Alex is total stud who's put together, who is, who has experienced plateaus, who has had to work through those. I'm assuming he has, everybody does. Right. But he's also a competitive weightlifter. Right. He's an elite right. athlete. And so I'm sure there was a time where he started eating right. And then what was eating right at that time yeah. leveled up and he had to start eating more right and mo right and mo right right until he is sure right because you're going gonna... somebody like me will come in and say okay here i gotta do like alex you know i gotta start like measuring all this stuff and and doing all all this and running through all these processes and before you know it i'm like it's just too much it really depends on where you're at right now when i ate bad it was bad dude like i i, I swear i tell my wife a lot that I have an eating disorder mm-hmm. because I would eat like there, there was no, like I need a little snack. I eat right. <laughs> all of it. Whatever there's, no, it there's no question that I have an eating. I don't know right. if it would be an eating disorder, but yeah, I, I don't want to offend anybody ahead. by saying that I had an eating right. disorder because I probably, I didn't have an eating disorder. What I'm trying to tell you is that I ate a ton of food and most of it was bad. So you take that guy And what my coach at the time did when I first started, he just made me write down everything that I ate for three days. And then, so we looked at that list, which was probably hilarious, uh, if I could go back and find it. But You needed like a trapper keeper for three days of food. (laughs) And so he sat down and looked at it and was like, we, I remember the first thing we did was I liked to drink um, coffee. I like to drink sugar with my, with a little coffee in it mm-hmm. and every morning. And I would drink like a whole pot of coffee and it always had like a ton of sugar in it. He said, what I want you to do is for the next two weeks, don't put any sugar in your coffee. You can, don't change anything else. Just drink black coffee with no sugar. Two weeks? What the hell's wrong with you? All you got to do is make it two weeks. And so I did. And I didn't worry about anything else. I didn't worry about what I, what the other stuff I ate was or any of that. I just took the sugar out of my coffee and that little change stuck. Right. Cause I made it that two weeks and I was like, wow, that's not really a big deal. I can do that Mm -hmm. and I can just keep doing this. So all of a sudden you cut my sugar intake (laughs) by a lot, right. Just by taking away that sugar in my coffee. Mm -hmm. And so then, which is worth poundage. Right. Sure. I mean, you're going to start seeing big results pretty fast if you can cut that out. And so I see that I see the results that that has. And then I'm like, oh, man, this is great. What else can I do? And then I get excited. What's the next little thing that I can stop doing? Okay, well, let's cut out something else. Right. For a week. Let's try not to let's let's try not to eat so much bread this week. Do that for two weeks. So your nutrition basically took shape of its own. Once you got the ball rolling then you found that right. you had a desire to get better. You had actually yeah, seen results. but that's how it works, for, in my opinion. As like, opposed to running out and buying a scale. And right. You cannot take somebody that eats the way that I ate and the way that most people eat and tell them they can't do any of that anymore. <laughs> like, you have to stop tomorrow. Yeah. You just can't do that because it doesn't work. Like, they'll get pissed off and they'll be like, I'm tired of doing this, and after two two weeks or 30 days, they're like, screw it. I'm going on a binge and I'm gonna, and they go spend a week or two weeks eating just the way they did before. So it's much easier to say, okay, don't worry. Let's make a small change, something that'll show you some results and then add something else after we get that nailed down. Well, that's my, that's been my MO for years and years is going into the getting prepared for the big massive change getting prepared for that usually starts with a binge and then i'm going to start on monday and then i get into this stuff that's way over my head when what i really need to stop doing is stop eating candy bars 
you know, or stop eating pizza, stop, stop eating one right. thing. Last week, I was talking to a friend of mine who was giving me some really sound nutritional advice, and he knows nutrition. He's into all that. The advice was really good, but it was way over my head. It wasn't anything that I was going to follow or listen to. Right. The person that I'm talking about is you. Th- this quote was what you said when you came up into the conversation, and I expressed <laughs> how little interest I had in any of the, the conversation that was taking place. Mm-hmm. And you said, sometimes people get caught up in the big words and all the sciencey scientific stuff. We can get sidetracked yep. and overwhelmed with the devil in the details. Often, the best advice I can give someone is to stop being a disaster. Yeah. I thought, that's it. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's what I need to stop first. And, huh. and you weren't saying that in any sort of, you weren't, cutting at me that you know you weren't making fun of me you were just saying that's what i have to look at that's the only thing i need to get rid of is the disastrous mistakes (laughs) if i get down to a level where i'm plateauing and things are are not moving in the right direction then we'll we can kick that up another notch but i think that Mm -hmm. what people like me need to hear is stop being a disaster it's not there's there's no notebook required there's no pen and paper. There's just quit blowing it all. Yeah. You know, almost like I intentionally blow it. Yeah. And you, you probably are. It's very, it's highly likely people, I think, intentionally blow lots of things. I think that there's a, there's something to holding on to unhealthy habits that's mm-hmm. comfort, comforting. That's what I go on to write about is that the stop being a disaster doesn't stop and start at nutrition. It can be any area of of your life. We, I want to complicate things to such a degree that when I'll take an honest look at them, most of them are easily solvable. At least most of cutting off most of the fat is doable by stopping the obvious. You know, if you're right. in, if you're in an abusive relationship, instead of studying the psychology of abusers, get out of the relationship. Try that first. Yeah. You know, if you're getting DUIs, instead of looking at MapQuest and figuring out different routes around the <laughs> local roads, try to stop drinking. If you're tired all the time, instead of more caffeine and prescription drugs, to you know, try getting some sleep. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a lot to be said in just the looking at things truthfully and acting on that. Yeah, and just do it a little bit at a time is what I was saying. Just don't you know, make it so complicated. Well, who do you listen to? Where where do you go to find good information? It, it, as far as nutrition, it's everywhere. Yeah. You want me to answer that question? Yeah. Uh, I rely on the people that are uh, around me. A select few. Sure. I think that's key. Um, I, I'll start relying on, I, I'll, I'll ask a question. I don't really want to know the answer, but I want to ask the question so I will appear to be as trying. And then I'll, start getting a flood of answers from a lot of different people. And then I'll like everything that, that I like to hear. Mm -hmm. So I'll take the bits and pieces that I like to hear like a cheat day. I love a cheat day. Any diet with a cheat day. I start on that day. One is cheat day. Yeah. You know, as that unfolds, then I'll go on to the next bit of advice that is easy and allows me to be fat and do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You got to That's, that's the attitude you got to change with most people. But I think there's so much to be said for food addiction. You know, it's hard to break. You're talking about the sugar and the coffee. I don't know what, I don't know where you draw the line between addiction and disorder. But I think that food addict suits me just fine. (laughs) And it, it may go into disorder. I don't know. But in order for me to eat healthy, there has to be some removal like detox for me to go through. I can't start making better decisions that doesn't seem like until I make like more stringent decisions and take things completely out of my diet. Mm -hmm. I often wonder how many people do suffer from food addiction. Do you think it's most of us? Eating makes you feel good. What about the sugars and stuff that are in food? That's what I mean. That stuff's bad for you. You think it's it's addicting to most everybody? It makes you feel, oh yeah, for sure. It makes you feel good though for a minute. Yeah, it does. And then you got to have some more of it. I didn't really <laughs> buy the whole like 
comfort food thing. I, I really got my nutrition got really bad after I sobered up. And so I went from drugs and alcohol to food. Was it good bef- wh- while you were not sober? Uh, I or it liked, just got no, worse? No, 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 it wasn't. <laughs> no, my nutrition was not good at you all. You said it got worse. Well, it, it got to be more of a focus. What I would do when I was not sober, I've, I've said numerous times for eight years, if it didn't come from a drug dealer, a <laughs> liquor store, or a gas station, it didn't go in my body. Yeah. So every meal that I had for the most part was at one of the one of the local gas stations. And so everything that I ate was like fried chicken fingers and jalapeno poppers and stuff like that. But I didn't eat as much because I was always sped up. Right. And so when you got sober, you just ate a lot more. A lot. Yeah. And that became my thing to do. And when I woke up in the middle of the night, instead of having a Valium to put me out, I had a huge slice of chocolate cake and when Mm -hmm. i say a huge slice of chocolate cake i mean a chocolate cake (laughs) you ate the whole cake (laughs) that's what i'm trying to say reining that in has been difficult but coming to the conclusion that that's that's what's going on that's been helpful you Mm -hmm. know to identify that you know it's it's an addiction it's a problem I, i never i did not intend this beefcake to be nutrition as much as I <laughs> as much as I intend it to be around stop being a disaster and keeping nutrition simple uh-huh. and keeping everything in your life simple. Keep, keeping everything simple that's that's really what I how I wanted to answer that question that's that is what you were telling me in terms of nutrition and that's what I took from it in terms of my life mm-hmm. is that usually the answer is is glaring and right in front of me right but I want to strategize in these really elaborate ways that results in not having to deal with that. Right. Mm-hmm. And not doing anything. Yep. And I, there's a bunch of people that just like that. I think there are. I'm too. one of them. We're yeah. all one of, We all do it in we, some way. We all do it. We, we all live in some kind of denial. But there's no denying that you have a good deadlift program. <laughs> That's true. A three-month deadlift program on the LiftHeavyRunLong.com site. LiftHeavyRunLong.com slash deadlift. That's right. Three-month program, three days a week. You can do it in addition to whatever else training you're doing. Instructions, tutorials. And you're going to get stronger. The deadlift's going to go up, and we're going to put you in the 50, 400, or 300 club. That's right. 50 miles, 400-pound deadlift for men. 50 miles, 300-pound deadlift for women. And we're going to get some people in it. Yep. At Lift Run Long. I'm all over Twitter. And I'm you, learning how to tweet. You are all a buzz on the Twitter. I'm all a buzz on the Twitter. Saying some funny stuff, too. So is that supposed to be business? I think it's supposed to be whatever you want it okay, to be. Okay, good. Because I, I read where people say, don't confuse your, don't ever use your business account for your personal. Keep those separate. And we should do exactly what everybody tells us to do. That's the reason that I don't separate <laughs> them is because I'm like, I'm not listening to that. <laughs> If I, if I want to post about, you know, whatever I want to post about on my business, then I'm going to do that. So I guess I an- just answered my own question. At Lift Run Long, let's talk about stuff that doesn't pertain to lifting or running long. <laughs> Come find us. At Lift Run Long on Instagram. We also have a Facebook group uh, that's a lot of fun. And we also have a Reddit. I'm trying to get get and stay really hooked on Reddit. Yep. But it's not going as fast as I want it to go, which oh, nothing yeah. does. I'm addicted to it. So speaking of addictions. Well, you stay on there and help get this thing going. And anybody that's listening, get on Reddit and subscribe to us. We got 24-hour race. What's the date on that? It's today, September 31st, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Church of the Holy Spirit in, in Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. Yep. And you run as many one-mile loops as you can in 24 hours. Whether that's one mile or 100 miles, come out and do it. Yeah, that's the thing, man. I wanted to see how, well, I'm going to be in Disney World, so I'm not going to be there. But next year, when we do it again, I'd be curious to see how far I could get in yeah. 24 hours. I'm excited. We're going to have a, a LHRL tent out there. With, with all those awesome people there. With a bunch of awesome people and free food and fuel. And we're also going to have... Tailwind Nutrition was kind enough to help sponsor us and Boom. and send us some product. So Tailwind Nutrition is something that you mix into your into your fluids and it provides all your electrolytes and calories that you need to to keep moving. 
Um, I've used uh-huh. it just about since I got started doing any kind of distance. Yeah. And there's also nippies. Nippies. And they are nipple covers. And I started using those the day after Vaughn Rawls did not tell me to do anything about my nipples. And terrible, terrible coaching. Almost rubbed them off. Hey, but I, in my defense, I don't have nipple problems. And I didn't even think about that. Isn't that funny? I'll I'll let you off on that. I yeah. think that's that's probably pretty fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But nippies, n i p e a z e dot com. They're fantastic people, and they've been, you know, for somebody like nippies and Tailwind, just to up and support an up and coming thing like this. That's right. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, don't you have a coupon code for nippies? Uh, nippies coupon code is l h r l. There you go. So enter that, and you get I think fifteen percent. Sweet. Something like that. And our music, we got music, big stuff. We yes. Have people letting us borrow, pirate their music, only it's with permission, so it's not even pirating. Uh, yeah. Central Standards, my favorite band. Central Standards. My favorite people, really chill guys that said, knock yourself out. Cool. Uh, gave me the album Sputnik and said, do what you want to do with it. So go to iTunes and check out the Central Standards, and download the album Sputnik. And you can enjoy what you're hearing. Yep. And while you're there, give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Please do. Peace and love. Later. She's got you hanging round Like some locket she found You've got to put her You've got to put her down